Hello world, Shelly here and it's time for another episode of Foundation Fest and today I am checking out from KVD Vegan Beauty the Good Apple Serum Foundation retails for $42 for one ounce or 30 milliliters of a product comes in 40 different shades I've got this in shade let's see light 12 which is described as light with neutral undertones. I had had shade light 18 in the previous balm version of the Good Apple Foundation, and it was a smidge too dark for me. So the next shade down is light 15, which was warm undertone, which I did not want. 18 was a cool undertone, and then 12 was the next one down, and it is neutral undertone. The next shade down, that had a cool undertone looked like it would be too light for me this one looks like it also might be a little too light we're gonna find out we will check and compare it in some swatches but first let's take a look at what they say about this it is a lightweight full coverage serum foundation that blends and bends with skin for a natural seamless finish and transfer proof wear now in the more information i want to describe some of what they say uh where did it go i totally lost it uh you can recycle the glass bottle and it says that the cap discard pump and cap i thought on the box it said the cap was recyclable it does say it on the box oh the pump is not recyclable recyclable bottle and cap the box is actually quite quite pretty why are you focusing there there we go I am looking for the description that I've now lost here we go so full coverage natural finish uh, it's vegan cruelty free recyclable packaging um, there is an ingredient in here natural extract for shine control it is described as being for normal combo and oily skin and you know that's a little concerning to people with dry skin what you then wonder is did they leave dry skin out because they intentionally don't intend this to work for dry skin or did they leave it out because they didn't design it for dry skin but it might be okay like we're <laughs> we're gonna find out what they say you've never seen full coverage like this packed with flexible elastomer pigments Er? Good Apple Full Coverage Transfer Proof Vegan Serum Foundation blends and bends with your skin for a natural, seamless, flashback free finish that covers everything from blemishes to acne scars to hyperpigmentation. It has a poor blurring effect, non comedogenic, stands up to sweat and humidity. Now, we had spring for a minute here in Virginia, and now uh, it seems to be winter again. It's sleeting in 32 degrees outside, but. Um, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. I don't think I'll be testing this in humidity and sweat today, but let's take a look at shade light 12, swatched against a few others in my collection. Swatch time. First up is today's foundation from KVD Vegan Beauty, the Good Apple Serum Foundation in light 12. Second is from Estee Lauder, the Double Wear Stay in Place in 1C1 Cool Bone. Third up, I've got Max Studio Sculpt in NW15. And last is the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator in Fair. I've already cleansed, moisturized, and sunscreened this 48-year-old face. I will go in on one side with a damp sponge. The other, I've got my Sigma F80 here. I have primed with just a smidge of the Amazing Cosmetics line, smoother, and primer. So that is happening. I've already shaken this, but, you know, got to get it on camera. Otherwise, people don't believe me. This packaging is quite nice. I really like the details in the uh, glass. It's like, what's that raised? I can't think of the word, uh, but the cap matches. It's actually quite beautiful. Let's see what kind of consistency we have here. Oh, interesting. It actually looks darker outside of the bottle than it does inside of the bottle. Pretty thick. She thick, y'all. Let's start with the sponge side actually I probably did not pump out enough product but we will find out all right damp sponge here we go here we go what's the first thing I do get it right in my hair because that's how the pros do it uh yeah 
Hashtag not a beauty guru. <laughs> This has coverage right away because I'm just looking at my forehead and I'm like, oh, that looks like a clean slate. That looks like a blank canvas. I can tell this is neutral undertone because they did a good job. It is a neutral undertone for sure, but it immediately takes away the, the slight cool tint of my skin. I usually go neutral for summertime because when I get like just a smidge of sun, I'm leaning neutral. But in the winter, when I have basically no color, I prefer a slight cool tint. Whenever I test with the shade finder thing at Sephora, I either come up neutral or one step cool. So yeah, even with a sponge, that's some good coverage. Barely seeing that sunspot left hanging out, poking through there. But it covered up the rest of them with a sponge even. Okay, okay, okay. Let's try the brush side. The shade is not as light as I thought based on what it looked like in the bottle. That is good because I thought it was going to be too light. I'm going to take a little bit under my eyes. I'm going to take a little over here too. Just so I don't forget before I run out of what I pumped out. I might not need any more product actually. This little bit went a long way. I did probably the equivalent of a pump and a half. Coming out of the tube fresh. Let me just get my under eye over here. Before that dries down. Oh yeah, this is plenty of product actually. Pump and a half full face, I'm probably gonna have a little bit left over even. It does seem to dry down somewhat quickly, so you don't really wanna wait around. I can think I would do this half and half with my face if I was doing my whole face at one time and not stopping to talk about it. I think I would go straight through it's clinging just a tiny bit to some peeling that I've got under my eye here. I'm not sure if this is because this is the more textured side of my face, but this side with the brush does look like it applied quite a bit more smoothly. Not that this side isn't smooth and this side is more textured, but let me just see if it uses, actually the brush smooths it out quite a bit. I think I prefer the brush application for this. There's just a level of smoothing that's happening that the sponge did not give. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to go brush. Usually I think either one's fine, but uh, I'm going to go brush. All right. Coverage is excellent. The only downside I am seeing right off the bat is that it does cling to the edges of dry skin. So if you have any flaky peely skin, it is going to cling to the edges and make those edges visible because it's doing that. I've got some peeling here, some peeling right, right along my dark circle. So convenient to just scream and call it out like that. Thank you. Thank you, peelies. You're so kind. I have a little bit of peeling happening on my chin and a little bit happening right here on my cheek and you can just see the edges of it which really the only way around that is super moisturization and typically in my case a foundation that is on the dewy side of the spectrum because that seems to sort of help hydrate it all together and make it not appear dry or visible but this kind of a finish which is coming across to me as pretty straight up matte I was hoping it wouldn't be matte because they called it a serum foundation. So I was hoping for uh, uh, just a little bit of dewiness, but yeah, it's it's pretty straight up matte. Not that it's not that that's a bad thing. A lot of people go for a matte finish, and that's what you're looking for. Uh, I tend to have trouble with a matte finish because I just tend to look more dry, and it tends to age me a little bit. But otherwise, aside from the from the little dry skin flakes that I got going on, let's zoom in, get a good look at this one. The My chin's pretty peely right now, so you can kind of see all of that going on. There's a little bit of pink coming through, but this is only one layer of the foundation, so I think I could build up that coverage if I really wanted to disguise additional redness on my chin. It is doing a very nice job smoothing and blurring. It's a it's a very smooth looking foundation. Really the only places that I can tell that I've got foundation on are the little peely edges of skin that it is clinging to. It's doing that a little bit in the center of my forehead as well where 
I have been doing the scrub-a-dub-dub -dub lately on my face to get rid of some of my peelies since, you know, every other month I seem to shed my skin like a snake. And I'm coming out of one of those phases right now. So it is a little bit dry looking because of that. But overall, I think we're in good shape to start out. No alarm bells ringing just yet. I do think we're probably going to, by the end of the night, we're going to see if I'm... Do I have intuition for this? It's probably going to be a little too drying for my level of dry skin, but I'm going to give it a fair shake. Let's find out. It is almost one o'clock. Let me put the rest of my face on. I will be right back. Back with the KVD Good Apple Serum Foundation. No issues with blending, and I did use a combination of powder products and liquid, so on my face went to, this is my all-time favorite bronzer, the Balm Desert. Uh, it's a little more reddish undertone, which I love, so I went in with that, but then my blush is the Euphoria PH Color Changing Liquid Blush, because it goes pretty bright pink on me, and that's kind of what I was going for. I knew when I sat down today I was gonna dig into some pretty over-the-top pinks because I knew I got this lipstick I wanted to wear. New from Color Street, this is their Valentine's limited edition shade Heart Throb. I am in love with the little hearts on the magnetic top. So I knew I wanted to wear that, so I knew this was the direction I was going. So of course, I, find that in your Apple Music library. I was, you can no, not talking to you. Don't know how she thought that, so I had to dig out the most appropriate palette for this eye look. Ah, I don't wear this one as much. I forgot I had it, to tell you the truth. Natasha Denona Circle Loco. This is right up my alley. Pinks, purples, teals. I mean, come on. This is like... This was made for me, so that is what is on my eyes. My highlight is not really highlight, but the Merit... This is the Bounce Highlight Stick, and I just really enjoy it. It's more of a glass skin thing than it is a highlight thing, but it is just so pretty, and it works with everything. Like, it's just really, really, really pretty. And I wanted a little glass skin going on to bring back some of the moisture-based dimension that a matte finish foundation tends to take away from me. So that is what's going on there. My eyes, my brows and my lashes are, I'm obsessed. You know I don't throw that word around lightly. Lawless, this is their soft fill pencil in pecan. I've got their uh, soft set brow wax in, this is the medium to dark shade, and then their one and done mascara. That is what I'm wearing there. Everything seems to be going well. I really love the packaging on this foundation. The only complaint I have is it very obviously clings to peeling skin, which at a conversational distance, most people aren't going to notice that, but up close, yeah, you can see it. Uh, but if you don't have any peeling going on, I think everything else has been spot on beautiful so far. And I don't think the shade's too light for me. It looks too light in the bottle. It comes out the right shade. I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. It's a, oh, I'm, I'm pleased. Not complaining, not complaining. So I'm gonna go about my day. You know I'm gonna go get a sandwich. I'm also, I was gonna say actually, I'm also going to, okay, so I was catching up on watching some YouTube last night. And Frugi blog, Rebecca Frugalista blog, uh, Gosh, I haven't watched her in so long, and I love her so much. And early, early on, this week is seven years of YouTube for me. Seven years on YouTube. Uh, we, and I've been following Froogie Blog since forever. And so I was watching some videos for her. Wow, I had just uh, tangents. I was watching one of her videos of her most recent, like, drugstore loves what she's, or maybe it was, like, what she's loving in 2023. Something like that. And... Uh, I was like, wait a minute, your CVS has things that my CVS doesn't. However, I have multiple CVSs, and I only go into this one, the best CVS for makeup, which if you are ever passing through Harrisonburg, go to the CVS on um, Port Republic Road, because that is the best one for makeup. But, uh, these things, so Rebecca was talking about these flower beauty things, and I was like, wait, what? 
and new concealer and I hadn't seen that at my CVS but I haven't been to my other CVS, the one that's closer to where I used to live in the apartments downtown. So there's one on Martin Luther King Jr. Highway, Highway Road. I don't know what the designated term for that street is, but on MLK there is formerly Cantrell Avenue, if anyone's passing through town. That one apparently has them in stock. I went on the website and said, oh, anyway, this is a long way to say, I'm gonna go hit up my local CVS's and maybe even my Walgreens, cause I haven't been in there in a long time and see what I'm missing because apparently I'm missing things. I am, I was like, where's all the spring new releases? Uh, yeah, well, apparently they're there and I'm just, I just haven't gone out to the other stores. So I'm gonna do that today, even though it's a terrible day to do it. It's like winter. I'm looking past you into, through my ring lights, out the window, and it just looks so, it's so gloomy out, the night lights, are not even off. Like, you know how you have night lights and when daylight comes, they turn themselves off? Yeah, that's how dark it is outside. Anyway, let's go do the things. First up, sandwich. I'll take you guys along. Maybe maybe I'll show you what's happening in my drugstores. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I'll be back. I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. All right, stop number one. I'm at the illustrious CBS. And they did have what I was looking for, the Flower Beauty stuff. Here's our daylight check-in. It's starting to look a little dry on my forehead, but I think the shade match is just fine. Here's our close-up. A little dry looking, you know, when you start to see all the micro wrinkles. Same with my crow's feet. That's when I know I'm starting to get a little dry, a little dry. I think it's still looking good. Sorry, I got distracted. There's a beautiful Jeep over there. There you go. That's where we're at. What time is it? It is 4.46. So, I'll be back tonight. I might be, oh, should I show you what I bought? Let me show you what I bought. All right, we got the Flower Beauty Skin Smoothie. I went with the Radiant Glow Primer. The other option that I was thinking of was the they have a hydrating one, but I went with Radiance. This was the main thing I wanted to find. No, it wasn't. <laughs> this was a surprise. Joa Perfect Complexion Eye Serum Concealer. And I got another Joa foundation that I didn't realize was released. That's not it. This is it. All right, here we go. Crystal Glow Peptide Infused Foundation. And the other two Joa things, foundations, BB creams that I've reviewed, both got A's. So uh, I have high hopes for that. And then this was what I really wanted to find, was the Flower Beauty Get Real Serum Concealer. Now, I already reviewed the Get Real Serum Foundation, and I don't have it in my spreadsheet, oddly enough. So I don't know if this just came out. I think this is new. I don't know, I'm confused, but here we are. So that's what I bought. I'm gonna do a couple more drugstore runs, see what else I can find, and that'll be my day. I will check back with you guys in a bit. 1.09 a.m., that puts us, I think, right around the 11 hour mark. Let's take a look at how the KVD Good Apple Serum Foundation held up. I think, it looked good for most of the day. At this point on me, it is breaking down on my chin, around the dry areas, the dry patches that I've got going on. But overall, I think it wore comfortably. I have lost coverage on my nose. I did, of course, have to blow my nose. I don't know why every year I try to resist starting up my allergy medication <laughs> because I'm going to need it one of these days, but uh, yeah, I'm resisting still to this day, and it did hold up pretty well. I think I probably was able to blow my nose three times before it really transferred away, so I think the transfer proof claim has some legitimacy to it. If you have dry skin, I think that's the only downside of this one. It's a little bit drying, but I'm a lot dry, so I think if you're not super dry, 
you can still probably get away with this one. It's really the... I just finished watching the first half of You, season, what is this, four? Why do I watch this? I... <laughs> I'm like a combination of like freaked out and like mentally traumatized. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Foundation review. Had to wrap this up. We have to wrap this up. So, if you're not as dry as I am, I do think you can probably get away with it a little more than I can. In fact, I do think summertime I could probably wear this a little bit better than I can when it's still so dry outside. Let's zoom in and get a look at what's going on. On my chin, it's basically kind of broken up all over the place, but I do have a lot of peeling going on on my chin. So if we concentrate on the areas that I don't have peeling, which are basically my forehead, well, no, actually, I do have peeling on my forehead. My cheeks, I guess, would be the non-peely part of my face right now. It has held together quite well. So on the upside, for maturing skin, I think it has handled the blurring of pores and the smoothing of texture quite well. It's just that it's a little bit drying. Under my eyes especially, I can tell that they're pretty significantly dehydrated. The lines are, the crepey lines are visible and these days it's almost hard to make them visible unless they're getting really dehydrated because I'm telling you that that red bottle of Claren stuff is miraculous. But I am seeing that under my eyes, that, that crepey lines, dehydration look setting in. So for dry skin, I think, if you're if you're dealing with peeling, if you're dealing with flaking, you're you're gonna notice it with this foundation. If you're not that dry or you're not dealing with peeling and flaking, it's might not be as big of a deal. For maturing skin, I think it's actually pretty okay. Like I don't see it settling into lines, I don't see issues with texture, I don't see issues with it accentuating any signs of aging, and the coverage is really nice. It's a comfortable wear. I do think it's lightweight. I do think the transfer proof claim is pretty up there in accuracy. So if I had to give a grade to the KVD Good Apple Serum Foundation for dry and maturing skin, I'm going to go B+. I think if you're less dry than me, you might even be able to squeak an A- minus out of this one. I like it. It's just I'm not going to be able to wear it when I'm dealing with flaking and peeling. And in my scenario, that's often. <laughs> so that that's kind of where I'm where I'm gonna land on this one. I'm gonna land B plus, but it is the kind of foundation that I'm gonna wear a few more times, and I definitely wanna try it out in the summertime when it's more humid here and less drying, and see if I can get more wear out of it that way. We'll see, we'll see. We're gonna go B plus for this one. There you have it. What do you think? Have you tried it yet? Have you got other foundations you would like me to check out? Leave them down in the comments below. I keep a running list, I buy them whenever I can. And as always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. I appreciate your time and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other, bye bye. Thank you.